Hello everyone, Helen here. Thanks for coming to join me today. I hope you're doing okay. Uh, if you're new, a uh, big welcome. And uh, I live in Durham in the northeast of England and I'm a piano teacher some of my time. The rest of the time I make things and I enjoy the out, out of doors. So today's uh, episode of my podcast is just getting you up to date with uh, projects that I've been working on, um, knitting and crochet ones today. I have been doing some other things, but I'm going to show you them another time. So yeah, so let's get down to that. And then we're also, I've got a little bit of baking and a little bit of outdoors, enjoying the winter days that we've been having. So yeah, sit down and relax and... Uh, I'll just chatter on to you about what I've been doing. So, yeah, um, projects. Well, the first two projects that I've finished are not with me any longer. Fortunately, I've got photos to show you, so that's OK. They've both been gifted uh, to different people. So my first finished project of the year uh, was a pair of socks. <laughs> and this was these were knitted in the most beautiful sock yarn I've ever used, I think and uh, it was absolutely beautiful to knit with and also uh, the, just the finished socks felt so gorgeous. The, the colours just delighted me the whole time. So it's a yarn made by Sparkle Ducks and it was called Unicorn Field and yeah, lovely name for it. So yeah, so this pair of socks was for my daughter, Sarah, and every year for the past, I don't know how many years, I've always knitted her a pair of birthday socks. And her birthday is the 10th of January. So um, so I had to get going after Christmas and get, these, get those socks finished. And I had had that yarn in my stash for quite a long time. I think I bought it the last time I went to the Yarndale Festival, uh, which was in 2018. That's the last time I went there. So... Maybe this year I'll get there. But anyway, so so I'm very glad to have used that yarn. And uh, yes, and my daughter was very pleased with them as well, with the socks. Uh, and then my second finished project of the year was another pair of socks. <laughs> and this was actually um, a belated Christmas present from my mum. Uh, she had requested some slightly thicker than usual socks, just that she could put on in the evening as an extra layer on her feet. So... I got out some more yarn that's been in my stash for absolutely ages. Um, a DK yarn made by River Knits and with, with the gorgeous colour name of um, Giant Squirrel. So and it has got really lovely colours in it. And again, it was uh, very nice to knit with. My only reservation with it was that just in certain places, there was a bit of uh, what I think is called pooling, where there was a bit too much of the reddish colour uh, all together and not just just sort of randomly and I wasn't so happy with that but you know it, it was fine it is really lovely yarn and uh, I don't know if it was intended to be like that but I would have preferred it to be more the colours to be evenly distributed as it is in most of the socks so yeah so there we go another pair of socks and what else have I finished? Oh yes, a lovely, lovely friend from WI, Helen, hello Helen, thank you, uh, gave me a pattern for making a very cute looking little sleeping kitten. Uh, so Helen knows I love making little toys and things, so she gave me this pattern. And uh, so I finished it so yeah, here, so, so it's kind of the size that will fit in my hand. And it was really, really fiddly. Uh, it was knitted partly in the round, so the head and body were knitted in the round, and then the you had to do the extra bits for the were the uh, legs and the sort of um, the top bit of the leg. But what was that called? I don't know what that's called. And the tail and the little ears all had to be um, done separately and stuffed separately. There was a lot of shaping in it. There was a lot of sections of short rows and wrap and turn and things so yes it was it was quite involved and then quite fiddly to put together as well after you'd sewn the features on you had to use a needle felting tool to try and shape the face a bit and I'm not sure I've really quite got it maybe I should have done it for a bit longer 
but uh, yes, uh, it, so it's, <laughs> so I don't know, it looks a slightly funny shape. I'm not sure that it really looks like the picture that's on the pattern. Um, I, I, can't, I can't find out whose pattern it actually is. It doesn't say anywhere on the pattern and I can't find the pattern again now. So apologies to whoever designed it. It is a nice little pattern if, you, if you're keen on little catch toys, uh, then yeah. It's, it's quite nice, but you have to prepare for it to be really fiddly. And I have knit other uh, little cats before that have been a little bit easier than this one. But anyway, so there we go, a little, little sleeping kitten. So you can sit down there. And uh, yeah, I think, I think that's it for finished projects, for, for knitting, knitting projects. Yeah, I haven't finished anything crochet, but I have got two crochet projects on the go. So I'll show you those now. The kitten can go over there. Uh, so the first uh, one that I can show you is um, actually what you saw me uh, crocheting at the start of today, which is the fireside blanket here. And uh, this is a, if you don't know, it's a free pattern by Lucy of Attic24. Yet another of her beautiful blankets that she just, you know, offers offers for uh, no cost at all. And I thought, uh, I chose to do this one because, uh, first of all, I just loved, as ever, I loved the combination of colours. Really, um, yeah, just very cosy colours, I think. I would describe them as and it's Stylecraft yeah Stylecraft Highland Heathers that's what the yarn is called it is acrylic lovely and soft it feels really soft so yeah so that was the first thing that attracted me was was just of course the colours not surprisingly uh, and and then the other thing was that I hadn't done a, a blanket with squares for quite a long time and this one is a join as you go squares blanket and you can see that there's two different sizes of squares, bigger ones and smaller ones. And and so it, it's it's come out, well, you can see that, um, as a square blanket. And once you finish doing the individual squares, you then do a border, just a granny stitch border around the edge. Uh, there's quite a lot of rows to do. I don't know, there's something like 20 20 rounds of uh, of the granny stitch but anyway I'm enjoying doing that it's it's a very relaxing uh, thing to make and I didn't have any problem with the join as you go and I, I, I mean I, I don't have a problem with I like sewing uh, squares together but uh, but yeah this this is quite nice I don't have to um, I don't have to sew anything together and I just had a lot of ends to tie, to sew in, but I did it as I went along. So, yeah, there's all, all it's all on the back. It's all of the ends have been sewn in as I've gone along. Uh, so, uh, not the border. You can see ends from the border, maybe. But yeah. Anyway, so so that's that. I'm well on the way with that, uh, and it's just a lovely thing to do in the evening. It's just so easy, just doing the same stitch all the way around. And my other work in, in progress is a jumper. Uh, and if you've seen recently, a recent podcast, um, you'll have seen the pattern that I was given by my lovely friend Margaret on the Isle of Skye. And uh, I've never made a crochet jumper before, but I had wanted to make one. So, uh, so I have made a start on it. So it, you start from the top here. This is how much I've done. Yeah, done the yoke. And yeah, so you start from the top, there will be a, a ribbed uh, neck, you know, around the neck, rib around the neck uh, later on, we'll be doing that. And then I've, so I've got as far as uh, finishing where the sleeves will go and made a start on the body. Uh, when I got to, uh, I, I chose the size that I was doing and it's a really good pattern. Uh, it's a, it's a very, what I would call a very inclusive pattern because it goes from very small to very large. And so I chose my size. I, I measured a, another jumper that I've got to just check that, I, you know, that was the size that I wanted to do. 
but when I got down to the point where you joined the uh, did this bit across to to make the sleeve hole it was going to be a bit of a tight sleeve I tried it on and so I took it out took out that little bit and uh, went up a size and so so that should be okay now I have tried it on and uh, so yeah so now again a bit like the blanket that I'm doing at the moment it's it's not at all challenging because I'm just going round and round there's a lot of sewing in events because each time you change colour you, know, you have to fasten off and sew in the ends but uh, you, you can't carry the yarns up I don't think it would look very good anyway on the back so I'm using four colours of a King Cole yarn it's not the yarn that was suggested in the pattern because that was a 100% uh, acrylic uh, one. I think it was a paint box yarn that was suggested. Anyway, uh, I decided I did want some wool in it. So this is 50% wool and 50% acrylic. It feels nice and soft and it should be lovely and warm. Uh, oh, <laughs> you can see that I'm, I'm doing it in blues and greys, uh, but I really meant it to be in greens, but when I finally chose, after looking at all the yarns, comp comparing to what the pattern said, um, and I'd chosen this Kinkle one because it seemed to be the, the you know, very similar to the paint box one. Uh, but they didn't have enough of the colours of the green, greenish shades that would that I thought would go together. So I ended up with with blues and greys. But I think that's going to be be rather nice. I hope so. Anyway. So yeah, so uh, and the great thing about working from the top down, if you've if you've done it, you'll know, is that I can just make it the length that I want it to be, and when I when I join on here for the sleeves, uh, I'll be able to make the sleeves exactly the length that I want them to be, and so yeah, so that's I'm I'm enjoying doing that and interested to see what it's like when when I've finished it. So and. I have been doing one or two other bits of making. Uh, I've, I've kind of got in, uh, I've got a bit interested in making dolls and I haven't really done much in the way of doll making before. Uh, as, yeah, as a child, young person, I did used to make dolls, but just sort of rag dolls, um, very simple ones. I used to love doing that. Uh, but yeah, I've got a bit interested in, in again, in making dolls. So I'm, I'm gonna show you that a separate time so far I've just done two very small ones uh, but I'd like to make a bigger one and yeah so I'm going to talk about that another time and if you saw my advent big advent applique picture that I did uh, I'm using felt and embroidery and things I have now finished that and it's I've added a backing to it and I've added three hanging loops to the top so that I can put a stick through and then hang it on the wall next Christmas. So, but that's put away now. So, so that's finished as well. Yeah. So I, th I think that's it so far. I have, uh, as I have said to you before, I've been having quite a slow start to the year. So I'm not not rushing to try and do lots of things. I'm just going the pace that that uh, you know feels right for me at the moment. So yeah, but I have been in the kitchen. It's absolutely ages since I did any baking, and oh, I suppose not counting things I did for Christmas. I did I did make a lot of mince pies before Christmas, but uh, I decided I fancied making some uh, just some, some little biscuits that are called melting moments. They're one of my favourite recipes out of the bureau book and uh, which is yeah it's always the first recipe book I go to if, if I just want something comforting and familiar uh, and so I decided I wanted to make some melting moments because they just take me right back to childhood I always whenever I make them I think about how I used to help my mom make them and usually she used to get me to chop up the cherries uh, and put the put a bit of cherry in the middle of each biscuit before she she put them in the oven so so yeah come come on into the kitchen with me and we'll make some melting moments
So if you'd like to make some malting moments, uh, I'll put the recipe down in the description box below the video or to the side of the video. It appears in different places depending on what you're watching it on. But anyway, and, and now they've changed, um, well, certainly on my YouTube app on my iPad, they've changed how you get to the description box because before it was a little down arrow that you used to have to press, but now uh, you have to press the word or tap on the word more. So anyway, hopefully you can find your way there if you would like to have that recipe. And so I'm just going to finish off today with some with some video that I've taken while I've been outside on my walks through some of the wintry weather that we've had. We haven't had any really severe wintry weather yet and maybe we won't now, I don't know. Um, but we have had some beautiful frosts and uh, the occasional bits of snow and uh, so I just put put together a few of the photos and video that I've taken while I've been out. I just I, I never tire of seeing all of the all of the seed heads with frost all over them or the tops of the fence posts. Oh, I, I just love it. I, every, every time there's a frost, I end up taking photos of them. I've got lots of lots of similar photos. But um, anyway, uh, it, it's just lovely, isn't it? To just go out and appreciate those really simple things. And uh, yeah, it takes your mind off all the other troubles of the world, hopefully. So uh, yeah, so sit back and enjoy a bit of wintry cold weather. Well, I hope that didn't make you feel too cold or maybe if you're having hot weather at the moment, you were glad of it <laughs> to make you, make you feel a bit, a little bit cooler. But uh, anyway, I'm going to finish there for today and I'll be back again very soon uh, with, I don't know what, I don't know what we'll have next week, but uh, come pop back in and, and see what I've been up to. So until then, take good care of yourself, keep nice and busy and I will be back again very soon. Okay then, bye.